This week on Jerusalem Dateline, Israel and Hamas agreed to a ceasefire, but where will it lead? Is it the end of the fighting? And Israel's amazing Iron Dome technology, saving lives on both sides of the conflict. But what happens when a rocket gets through? We'll visit a family whose home was hit. And the worst Israeli Arab violence inside Israel in decades. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. Israel and Hamas agreed to a ceasefire that stopped the heaviest fighting between the two since 2014. More than 200 died in Gaza, while 12 died inside Israel. The ceasefire came after intense pressure from the United States. In 11 days, Hamas fired more than 4,000 rockets into south and central Israel that sent millions of Israelis running for shelter. In response, Israel launched a massive and surgical bombing campaign to stop those rockets. Despite devastating damage to its military infrastructure, Hamas and its supporters took to the streets and declared victory. Netanyahu, the Zionist enemy, and his army said that they would destroy the tunnels above our resistance. And I tell him today that our fighters are now striding proudly in the tunnels. Iran supplied many of the rockets to Hamas, and in Tehran, the head of Iran's Revolutionary Guard boasted a new Palestine has emerged. In a live address, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told the nation, The only thing that leads me in making decisions is the security and safety of the Israeli people. If there was a need to enter Gaza with ground troops, we would have done it, but I believe we could accomplish our goals without doing so. U.S. President Joe Biden pressured Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to stop the fighting. I commended him for the decision to bring the current hostilities to a close within less than 11 days. I also emphasize what I've said throughout this conflict. The United States fully supports Israel's right to defend itself. Yet in Israel, nearly three quarters of Israelis felt the ceasefire came too soon without eliminating Hamas's ability to wage war. Hamas's charter calls for the destruction of Israel, and Islamic expert Dr. Mordecai Kadar told CBN News that for Hamas, the 11-day conflict was a jihad, a holy war, and Israel was on the front lines. Kadar says while the West may look on this as a ceasefire, Hamas sees this through the eyes of the Arabic concept of hudna. Means a temporary ceasefire. Uh, which is used by the jihadists in order not to start a course of peace, but in order to regain his power, in order to have a better uh, jihad in the next phase. Israeli leaders now go back to trying to form a government. Even though most Israelis felt the war ended too soon, many approve of how Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu handled the crisis. So he may yet survive the challenge to his leadership. And it's possible Israelis will also end up heading to the polls once again, the fifth time in just more than two years. During the conflict between Israel and Hamas and other Islamic terror groups inside Gaza, I talked one-on-one -on -one with former Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Ron Dermer, who addressed a number of issues, from Israel's right to defend itself to the importance of evangelical Christian support for Israel. In the first week of the conflict alone, Hamas and other terror groups fired close to 3,000 missiles into Israel, putting up to 4 million Israelis in bomb shelters day or night. Ambassador Ron Dermer wonders how Americans would respond. I would ask Americans who are watching this unfold in Israel, think about this. Our army is fighting this war and surgically going after the terrorists not thousands of miles away from our shores. It's right in our backyard when our own population is in bomb shelters. So imagine 150, 200 million Americans sitting in bomb shelters. What do you think they'd want their army to do in order to get at the terrorists who are firing rockets at them? Many of Hamas's rockets have hit towns in south and central Israel, including its second largest city, Tel Aviv. Dermer blames Hamas for a double war crime. They target our civilians by firing rockets indiscriminately into our population center, hoping to kill as many Israelis as possible. But the other thing they do is they embed their terrorist infrastructure 
in civilian areas. So they place their weapons next to schools, next to mosques, next to hospitals, and they even took over military intelligence of Hamas, took over a building where journalists are because they want to use these people as human shields. Well, these are legitimate military targets, and even though they're legitimate military targets, we will take the steps necessary to keep civilians out of harm's way. Israel has taken out large towers inside Gaza City and large parts of Hamas's war machine, but with relatively few casualties in light of Israel's massive bombing campaign. Because we warn them. We actually call people. We then fire a weapon that sort of knocks at the top of the building, telling people, get out of the building. We give them the time to leave, and then we take out the building. The Associated Press is outraged over Israel destroying the building that housed its offices even though Israel reportedly showed evidence to the U.S. that Hamas worked out of that building. Dermis says Hamas is manipulating the media. Part of Hamas's strategy is to turn the media into enablers for what they're doing. How does it work? They will fire rockets at us. Then when we respond to that rocket fire in those civilian areas and unfortunately make a mistake or there's collateral damage, civilians die, then Hamas wants the entire world to blame Israel. The media should report on everything, on everything but they should lay the blame squarely where it belongs, on Hamas. And if they understand Hamas, that the media will not enable them. Dura says Hamas's strategy is to confuse the situation. They want to say both sides are at fault. Both sides are not at fault. On one side, you have a democracy called Israel that values human life, the lives of our own citizens, and also the lives of our enemy civilians, those who, who they are using as human shields. On the other side, you have a terror organization that glorifies death that is trying to kill as many Israelis as possible and doesn't care about their own people. They actually will use them in their propaganda wars. And I don't think any moral equivalency should be made between the, uh, between the two. During the current conflict, Dermer says U.S. evangelical support is vital. I hope that Christians will make their voices heard now. I hope that they will call their representatives, tell them how important it is to stand with Israel. Because I can tell you something, Chris, and you've seen this around the world. Those people who are the opponents of Israel, they're in the streets. They're waving their flags. They're demonizing Israel. And it's important that the friends of Israel go out there and make clear that they stand with Israel. According to Dermer, what lies ahead is a determined Israeli campaign to degrade Hamas's ability to wage war so that this conflict does not repeat itself anytime soon. Around the world, people have been amazed at the ability of Israel's Iron Dome anti-missile system to shoot down most of the rockets fired out of Gaza. We visited one of those batteries somewhere in central Israel, where the Iron Dome has saved lives on both sides of the conflict. During the recent conflict, as some four million Israelis sought cover in bomb shelters, an aerial battle was taking place in the sky with Israel's Iron Dome providing an amazing layer of protection. Behind me is one of the many Iron Dome anti-missile systems here in south and central Israel. During the conflict with Hamas and other terror groups, the Iron Dome has shot down more than 90% of the rockets coming out of the Gaza Strip. Imagine yourself that those 90% rockets that were intercepted were, would be falling into our cities. CBN News met one of the men responsible for creating this technological marvel, retired General Daron Gavish. Through cooperation and funding from the U.S., Israel developed the anti-missile system 10 years ago. It's the technological equivalent of a bullet hitting a bullet. Ten years ago, it was only the beginning. We had to kind of invent the wheel because there is no other place in the world that something like this is going on. This viral picture literally seen round the world captured the essence of the Iron Dome. On the right side, you see rockets fired from Gaza. Then on the left side, Iron Dome shoots them down. I see, first of all, the willingness of the Hamas to throw rockets into our cities. This is something untolerable, and this is something that we cannot accept. I think neither us and neither any democracy in the world. CBN News experienced the effectiveness of the Iron Dome when we took shelter from a rocket attack and heard the Iron Dome intercept two missiles overhead. General Gavish sees it as a true lifesaver on both sides of the fight. Many believe without Iron Dome, Israel would have been forced into a ground war with potentially massive casualties. By the end of the day, we could look in the mirror and we could say we did something for the defense of Israel, we did something for our civilians, and we're saving life. And this is what the air defense is doing. 
Terrorists from Gaza launched more than 4,000 rockets at Israel in this 12-day war. Most that were headed for populated areas were intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome. But here's what can happen when one breaks through. After enduring a night of sirens, Kayla and Javier Montenegro spent Friday night sleeping in the bomb shelter. About six o'clock in the morning, the siren went off again. I heard it at a distance because when you're in the shelter, it's not very loud. I got up very quickly and closed the door, and when I turned, I heard a boom. It was the explosion. When I left the shelter, there was a smell of gunpowder and water was falling because the rocket had hit the water tank first and that prevented a fire in the house. The rocket hit their building, then exploded before crashing through the ceiling of their top floor apartment. What impacted me the most was that the Lord put peace in my heart. The neighbors were witnesses. They didn't know why we had so much peace. Later, we realized that we had several miracles. A few centimeters more, the rocket would have gotten into the house and it would have destroyed everything. Thank God the explosion was above and not inside the house. Some four million Israelis, nearly half of Israel's population, have been terrorized inside bomb shelters. Most of the rockets have hit the coastal region, but many have come here to Beersheba, and this one made a direct hit on the Montenegro's home. We've been living in Israel for 19 years. This is our seventh war. With each war, we see that the technology is greater on the enemy's side, with a longer range and much more power. The Jewish agency visited the Montenegros, who are immigrants from Argentina, to show their support. This round has been a very rough run, an intensive one. And I should say uh, it, it never makes sense and it never should be natural for anyone, any civilian population to go through what we're going. And so we are strong people. We will come out of it, hopefully stronger, but we pray for quiet and for peace for all. Christians from around the world also showed support to the Montenegros, who bear no ill will toward the people of Gaza. El pueblo palestino no es jamás. The Palestinian people are not Hamas. Unfortunately, they have a terrorist government and they're the ones that are bringing on this conflict. We all want peace. Jews want peace, but also the Palestinians want peace. The only thing we can do is pray. They are thankful to be alive. We have experienced in our lives the sovereignty of God. Everything that happens is for a purpose, and to those who love God, all things work together for good. I feel we're safe in his hands. God in his mercy allowed his word to be fulfilled. 10,000 may fall at your right hand, but it will not touch you. We thank God we're healthy. We're blessed by God. We want to take this message of peace and hope to Israel and the rest of the world. Coming up, Islamic groups target one of the largest Christian Facebook pages that brought millions together to pray for Israel during the conflict. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel, now available at CBNRadio.com. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day.
At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. While Islamic groups from Gaza fired rockets into Israel, another battle, this time online, when Islamic groups attacked one of the largest Christian Facebook pages. The page brought millions of Christians together to pray for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. The Jerusalem prayer team established nearly 20 years ago with a reported nearly 77 million followers on Facebook saw it suddenly shut down. Mike Evans tells CBN News an anti-Semitic campaign of hate targeted the Facebook page. An organized Islamic campaign coming out of Pakistan, Indonesia, and Turkey targeted our site with over one million comments. So Facebook, rather than contact Bible believers and find out the truth, they responded to radical Islamic 911 would-bes and pulled us down. The cyber campaign happened in the middle of the team's prayer time during the conflict between Hamas and Israel. We've been praying for peace. We've been praying for God to protect Israel. We've been praying for peace in Jerusalem. We've been praying for a blessing over the Jewish people, protection over the Jewish people. We've been praying for protection over Arab Israelis. The attack campaign was twofold. First came the negative Facebook comments. People coming from anti-Semitic groups calling for, for a second Holocaust, people attacking us personally, people making threats upon us personally. Second, the hackers spread a false narrative that Facebook created the page during the conflict and then had people like the page without their consent. Dozens of videos with thousands of views across social platforms celebrated the news that the prayer team's page was down. Al Jazeera also reported on the situation. I'm incredibly disappointed right now, basically, that, that instead of these anti-Semitic people who are attacking Christians for praying for peace in Jerusalem, for praying for peace, uh, an end of the bloodshed, and instead of stopping those anti-Semitic attacks against us, Facebook has shut our page down. The Jerusalem prayer team is appealing the decision, and Evans has enlisted the help of U.S. and Israeli leaders. CBN News reached out to Facebook, and they provided us with this statement. We removed Jerusalem prayer team's Facebook page for violating our rules against spam and inauthentic behavior. My prayer right now is that Facebook would, would start to act with hopefully integrity on the situation and and restore our, our, our prayers. You know, in this era, the fact that your prayers could be canceled on the internet is uh, an unimaginable thing. Evans came to Israel to report from the front lines of the conflict as part of a television special that includes many Christian leaders. But it's to bring solidarity for the state of Israel and to oppose the lies to the evangelicals of the world. Evans sees the special as an effort to win the media war and counter what he says is the mainstream media believing the lies of radical Islam. Up next, as the world focused on the Israeli-Gaza conflict, the worst Jewish-Arab tensions in decades raged inside Israel. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. I'm Ephraim Graham. And this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. 
the fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Takun Olam. This is our nature as a country. To make the world a better place. Literally, we felt the earth shaking. The Christian Broadcasting Network presents To Life. How Israeli volunteers are changing the world. This film needs to be seen by everyone. I was in tears. Now you can own the inspiring documentary to life on DVD. There is blood on our hands if we know and we walk away. I'm so grateful that this film was made. To life can be yours for a gift of $10 or more. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. We know that every minute counts to save life. It'll uh, bless Israel, but it'll also bless all the friends of Israel. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are making the world a better place. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com to get your copy today. While most international attention has been focused on Hamas launching rockets from Gaza, and Israel's military response. On the ground, some fear a greater scourge is taking place, growing violence between Arab and Jewish Israelis throughout Israel. We traveled to the mixed Jewish-Arab city of Lod and spoke with police spokesman Mickey Rosenfeld about the situation. Mickey, tell us, we're here in Lod. What's been going on? We're at the entrance of Lod uh, in the heart of Israel. We're about five kilometers from the international airport. We've had major disturbances and riots that have taken place inside the city. And at the moment, there are more than 500 extra border police officers tactically located at all different areas in order to prevent any further riots. Both inside the city itself, where we are, we've had synagogues that have been burnt. An Israeli man was murdered brutally by Israeli Arab suspects who were arrested as part of the ongoing investigation. But this is a flashpoint in the heart of Israel at the moment. So as we cross uh, here, uh, Mickey, uh, what sparked all this? How did this all get started? Well, this was part of the tensions that took place all across Israel, unfortunately by Israeli Arabs who were involved in disturbances, took to the streets unnecessarily, and it's very sad to see because the Israeli Arabs are part of our communities. All of a sudden, they take to the streets, and as you can see here, they were burn, burning stuff, burning equipment. They were involved in full-scale riots. All of this was equipment that they used to block the roads. There was a full-scale riot where our police units over here, where we are right now, had to use non-lethal weapons and disperse and prevent Israeli Arabs from attacking Jewish people here in the cities. Mm -hmm. It's not 1948, it's not 1967, it's not the pogroms. These type of acts cannot take place in a modern democratic society. What has been done to try to defuse the situation? Have leaders of Jewish and Arab communities been meeting? Our police officers and the commanders of the city have met with the mayor. We're calling upon all of the residents to take control of the situation and be calm. We are asking the leaders also to walk around with us and be on the streets, get the message out. It's not just a tactical police effort on the ground, but it's also an important leadership effort that has to also take place by the mayor and the leaders of the Israeli Arab communities. I can also confirm to you that over the last 24 hours, the situation has calmed down somewhat, but a lot of police activities taking place, searching for weapons that could be inside apartments that could be used. And we want to do everything possible to make sure that there won't be anyone that will be killed or majorly injured here inside the city, both Jewish residents as well as Israeli Arab residents. A lot of people that watch this pray for Israel. How would you recommend that they pray for the situation? Well, Israel is a strong country. Israel has a humanitarian army. We're praying for our soldiers and our security officers and the Israeli National Police. They're doing everything to protect and serve the country. We've been through difficult times before. We'll succeed in getting through these times as well. And we're hoping that we'll be able to minimize the number of casualties. And that's what we're dealing with. Still ahead, an artist who has been working for years to turn deadly Hamas rockets into something beautiful. It's the new Superbook Bible app. It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. 
Plus, an easy to understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta da! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. On the home front. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. Wednesday at 3 on the CBN News Channel. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. The Global Lane takes you around the world, providing facts over fiction. What might rising trade and geopolitical tensions mean for you on the home front? With over 45 years of experience, award-winning journalist Gary Lane brings you the truth from a global angle. What about the issue of immigration? World news analysis you won't see anywhere else. And it's all right here on the Global Lane. Thursday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. As you have seen throughout our show, Israelis have been plagued by rocket attacks for more than a decade. Here's a story we did some years ago about one Israeli artist who was working to turn that suffering into beauty. Yaron Bob is an art teacher and blacksmith who lives in Yated, a small Israeli community near the border with the Gaza Strip. The first concern that I was receiving, I didn't want to touch them. This is the instrument of death. Bob gets the spent rockets after they have been checked by the bomb squad. I start to play with the Qassam and start to see what I can do. It struck me that I need to make a rose from the Qassam. The base is a map of Israel with the rose growing out of the border with Gaza. I take the Qassam, the instrument of death, and I change it. I transfer it into something of beauty. Well, that's just one way Israelis have for years been redeeming this horrific situation. Please remember to pray for the protection of Israel. And remember the psalmist said that he that watches over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. And pray that he will comfort all those who have lost loved ones in this conflict. And remember, too, on Saturday, May 22nd, we'll be presenting an online webinar called Israel Under Fire from Gaza. To sign up, go to go.cbn.com slash Israel Under Fire. Well, that's all for this edition. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline. <music>